God was there with us. Only one time I could see that maybe my husband was going to go home to be with Jesus when his heart rate dropped to 34. The Lord immediately told me, go pray. When I laid hands on his chest, his heart rate jumped from 34 to 69 in a in a second and the doctor was amazed he said whoa i've never seen anything like that before and i said that's god that's what god can do amen so today you know what and every day just because it's easter hallelujah we should always give god the praise the glory the honor the respect the love our time don't get too busy for god because god is never too busy for you amen and I thank God this day that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's go ahead and stand. Let's raise our hands this day. Hallelujah. Father God, we come before you right now. First of all, we thank you for being our Heavenly Father. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, that died upon the cross for our sins, that shed his blood at Calvary. Hallelujah. And is alive today and forevermore. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the sacrifice. We thank you for the death. We thank you for going to the very pit of hell. We thank you for giving us life forevermore. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit this day. Hallelujah. Our comforter, Lord God. We thank you for your word that is all true. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you the glory this day, Father. We ask you, Lord God. Right now, we welcome you, Father God, in this ministry, Father God, with open arms. Hallelujah. And we say, Father, let your Holy Spirit have its way this day, Father God. Oh, yes, heal those that are sick, Lord God. Deliver those that are bound, Father God. Strengthen those that are weak, Father God. Hallelujah, Almighty God. We give you the glory this day, Father. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.
one on this on this bank of the river and one on the opposite bank. And one of them said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, How long will it be before these astonishing things are fulfilled? Sometimes we're wondering when we're gonna get our next break, amen. Sometimes we're wondering when we're gonna get our next our next miracle. left hand toward heaven. And I heard him swear by him who lives forever, saying, it will be for a time, times and a half, when the power of the holy people has finally broken, and all these things will be completed. And I heard, but I did not understand. So I asked, my Lord, what will this outcome will be? And he replied, go your way, Daniel, because the words are rolled up and sealed until the end of time. And many will be purified and made spotless and refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is abolished and the abomination that causes desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. And blessed is the one who waits for and reaches the end of 1,335 days. So what God is saying is this, is that hold on, hold on because your victory is coming, amen? Your victory is right here. He already rose from the dead. You just got to keep waiting and waiting till he comes back because he's ready to come in to wipe away every tear, amen? He's here and we bless his name, amen? Amen. Amen.
God. We are with you, Jesus. Any um, confusion, anything, God, that is not of you, we just ask it to leave in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. You guys love Jesus in this place. Amen. Did you guys all get a dope drawstring backpack? Everyone get one? Make sure you guys got one on the way out. If not, make sure you guys got candy on the way out. If you are a kid or if you are a big kid and there's some left, go for it. Amen. But happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen. You guys know what that even means, right? Like Jesus rose from the grave. He rose and he is alive and he is living. Amen. How many know that? Like, like all they had to do to disprove Christianity is just find a body, right? That's all they had to do. Say Jesus is still dead somewhere, right? So you could imagine like the Roman soldiers were guarding the tomb of Jesus, which is like the most powerful man on the planet at the time, and they can't even find the body, right? Because Jesus is alive, right? So those that say that Jesus didn't rise, like, I mean, like, how, like, imagine our CIA not knowing where the body of someone that just died that's a murderer, right? That they're waiting, right? Like, it, it just don't make no sense. Like, it only makes sense that Jesus rose from the dead. So we're so excited for that this morning. He is alive and well. Amen. Hallelujah. Just turn the monitor off, Patty. If you can, the first red one. <laughs> I'm just going to unplug this if I have to. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is that okay? You guys hear me? Okay, I'm good like that. Okay, so the title of my message this morning is, How Beautiful Are the Feet? Right, so that doesn't sound like a normal Easter message, right? How beautiful are the feet? Like, how beautiful are feet anyway? They're kind of nasty, right? But I want to talk about the feet of Jesus. In Isaiah 52, verse 7, this is going to be our main scripture for the day. It says, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger who brings good news. The good news of peace and salvation. The news that the God of Israel reigns. So it says, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger who brings good news. In John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, right? So... The good news in the Bible, meaning that Jesus is God and he is the word, is that Jesus came to die for us. He rose again so that we may live now that we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. He sacrificed himself so that we could be free. That's right. That's amazing, right? So Jesus himself is the good news, right? It says, how beautiful are the feet of the messenger who spreads the good news, right? So there's something beautiful about the feet of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. As I was looking up the meaning of the scripture in Hebrew, um, Mabasar, it's where we get the, good, the word good news. It's an announcement of salvation and, this, and the assurance that our God reigns. It's where we get the word gospel and evangelize. So the good news is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. But I love what the prophet says. He says, how beautiful are the feet? Because feet are sometimes something we're ashamed of, right? Anyone ashamed of their feet? Some of us in here. Some of us, our husbands or our wives haven't even seen our feet. That's how ashamed we're. Because they're kind of nasty, right? They're kind of things that are hidden. Um, I remember, like, um, when Patricia was pregnant, we had worship practice, and, like, she's like, rub my feet. And, like, I was, I so I rubbed her feet, because, like, when you're married, it's not a big deal. And Trey was like, that's disgusting. What are you doing? <laughs> like, like, they're nasty. Like, when you get married, bro, you'll know. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a little nasty. I remember one time we went on a cruise, and, um, I bought these nice slides, and they were comfortable, and, and I never tried them on. They were Adidas. They had all the cushion. I was like, man, I'm set for vacation. And um, I tried them on, and they hurt my foot so bad. So I was like, man, I'm, I was already embarrassed because I don't like my feet anyway. And um, I was like, I'll just wear socks, Patricia. And I'm, I'm like, but someone's going to make fun of me. I kept telling her. She's like, no, nah, no one's going to make fun of you. You're on vacation. And immediately before I even got off the boat, like two people came and like, you're wearing socks with your sandals. Like, like, <laughs> like I felt so embarrassed. I was all mad at Patricia. I was like, see, I told you. <laughs> right? I told you. And they have to happen, right? So, like, feet are something that are often overlooked. But I love the Bible because he often uses overlooked things, right? He often uses people that, that shouldn't have been used, right? His disciples, were, were they cussed a lot. They were fishermen. They were tax collectors. They were these people that the normal people wouldn't use. But God says, I can use those people. Amen. Amen. How many know a lot of times we, got, we get caught up in something that looks good, like we think it has more value, right? 
you got more money, you got more value. You're better at sports, you got more value. And we often overlook things that God has a value, right? Like something like feet. Something like feet. I had a photo of Lydia, which would be showing, but I couldn't get it to play. And it was just it was just a picture of my daughter's feet. And as a man, like I, I really don't like think of feet or nothing, but as I counted my daughter's feet when they came out of my wife, like it was the most beautiful thing ever, right? And it's so beautiful. Like I know my dad told me, he's like, Josh, you got one job, but you're gonna do all the hard work. He's like, just make sure you count that there's 10, 10 fingers and 10 toes. And I was like, I got you, Dad. I could do that. So I just remember looking at her little tiny feet, which are right there. If you guys use your imagination, or if you just go look at her later on, they're still little, right? Like if you if you just use that imagination, I I think like as a father, like there's something special just about my baby's feet. Like I, I think about like when I'm changing her and and she's looking at me and her feet are there and I'm putting her socks on and I'm like so in love with everything she has, like her little toes and little stuff. And did you paint her toes, Patty? Man, I don't, I know, but but I thought she was going to. <laughs> Amen. But like it, it blows my mind because Jesus came not as a warrior, but he came as a baby, right? And the same feet that that later hung on the cross are now, they, they came as a, as a form of a baby where he could grow and he could he could live this life, amen? And, and it just gave me a picture of the Father's love that he would love us enough to send his son to die for us, right? Because as I think of Lydia, like, I love her with all of my heart. Like, I, I thought I loved my dog, but like, I love Lydia so much more, right? Like, she's my everything. So I could imagine our God in heaven sending his son to die for us, right? I mean, you know, the Bible doesn't always look at outer appearances. It says that God doesn't look at the outer, but he looks at the inward. Amen? Amen. So feet, they do a few things. Amen? This is a little weird Easter message, but it's going to go. It's going to be good. Amen? I promise you. So what do they do? They stand, right? So your feet are something that you use to stand. Without feet, it's pretty hard to stand. You might have a crutch. You might have a fake leg or something. You might have a peg leg or something. Whatever it is, but they stand, right? So God is just saying through our hardest times, we have to stand and rely on the good news of Jesus, right? So something that the feet of Jesus did, they stood through the test. Like Jesus not only came into this earth to live a perfect life, but he came to get tempted by Satan and overcome temptation. Amen. A lot of times we, we, we don't understand that God already overcame everything that we're struggling with. Amen. Is that, is that exciting to you? Yeah. Amen. So they stand and they move, right? I mean, no, God does not call us to stand still. Come on, somebody. He did not call us to be stagnant, but to preach the good news into all the world. Amen. The Bible talks about wearing your shoes of readiness to show the gospel of peace. So basically, God's saying, like, when you put on your full armor of God and you put on your shoes, it's because you need to go and share the love and share what God has done for us. Amen. So our feet, they stand, they move, and I wrote one more thing, they kick, right? Like soccer's or something? No. <laughs> Amen. Just sometimes I just wrote, you got to kick the devil out of your life. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 In Romans chapter 12, verse 15, it says, um, it just reiterates what we, we were reading. It says, and how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. Amen. Amen. So Jesus walked this earth, right? So he started his ministry at age 30, died at age 33. So three years of this life, Jesus was just basically walking from town to town, spreading the good news of Christ, right? Healing people, setting them free, casting out demons, doing all this stuff for three years. Imagine walking for three years, right? Like I get tired walking from that side of the church to this side of the church. But Jesus literally went, right? Like he went town to town, from nation to nation, from, from, from city to city, baptizing people. And, and there was just crowds all around him all the time. Like that boy probably didn't get no rest in three years. In Matthew 15, verse 30, and they didn't have, like, good shoes like we have, right? So their feet were probably pretty nasty, right? Probably a little stinky, right? It's going to be good, I promise. Promise. <laughs> Amen. So in Matthew chapter 15, verse 30, it says, Great crowds came to him, bringing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others, and laid them at his feet, and he helped them. The people were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled made well, the lame walking, and the blind seeing. And they praised the God of Israel. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. 
And then so in this time, this is right before he fed the 5,000. But all these people were lit, were just basically staying with Jesus for three days. 5,000 just men themselves, plus women, plus children. So like they probably said like 15,000 people just like there. And Jesus is just casting out demons. Bring in the sick, they're getting healed. Bring in the crippled, they're getting healed. Bring in anxiety and it's leaving, amen. Demons are getting thrown out. Like all this stuff is happening. And it says what they did is they laid all this stuff at the where? At the feet of Jesus, right? Because sometimes like we have some things in our life that only Jesus can fix, right? Sometimes we have to have some real prayers where we have to actually bow down on our face at the feet of Jesus because he is a king, right? So the difference about earthly kings is when they walk by, you bow down and you show them respect, but they just keep walking. But when they bow down at the feet of Jesus, their lives were forever changed. Come on, somebody. Like cripples got healed. He, um, mutes could, could talk, right? Lepers no longer had to be outcasts. Amen. God is saying that today. Some of y'all feel like outcasts. He says, you don't have to be an outcast no more because I'm bringing you into my home. Amen. Like God is so good. He says, I have, and, and Jesus says, I have compassion on these people. Like God of heaven, the God of the universe, the God that said, let there be light. And there was light, had compassion on us that are crippled and full of anxiety and depression and hurt and, and, and sinners and people that are no good. God still loved us enough to die for us. Amen. Amen. Some of us, we need to have that relationship that. If I get to Jesus, I might be healed. Amen. Amen. So there's three there's three um, little stories I'm going to read. The first one is about a man named Jairus in Luke chapter 8, verse 41. It says, then a man named Jairus, a ruler of the synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet. Amen. It's a good place to fall. Pleading with him to come to my house because his only daughter, a girl of about 12, was dying. Mark chapter 7, verse 25, it says, immediately after hearing about him, a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit came and fell at his feet. Amen. There's something about the feet of Jesus. There's something about how beautiful the feet of Jesus. In John chapter 11, verse 32, it says, When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and told him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not have died. Amen. So we see time and time again, in desperate situations, where do we need to run? To the feet of Jesus, right? To the feet of Jesus. To something that might seem insignificant to others, but to someone that is dying, the feet of Jesus are the only hope. Amen. And there was a reason why Sister Mary was dancing at these altars today. is because her husband just had a heart attack and he should have died. But how many know when she prayed, his heart rate came back. Amen. There's a reason that at the feet of Jesus, miracles happen. Amen. Does that make you excited? Does that make you excited that God is still doing miracles and God is still setting people free? In this story, there's three things. One was a, this lady had a demon-possessed daughter. And he's like, she's like, God, I've tried everything else. I've tried doctors. I've tried, I've tried nurses. I've tried all this stuff. And there's only, you're my last hope, right? I mean, sometimes we, we try everything else. We try girls. We try drugs. We try everything else. And we realize that it could only be answered at the feet of Jesus. I mean, no, demon possession, like, it doesn't stand against my God. Amen? Jesus came to cast out demons. Jesus came to cast out anxiety. Jesus came to cast out things of fear, the spirits of fear, the spirits of doubt, the spirits of inferiority, the spirits that, that, that keep us bound. Jesus came to cast them aside. Amen. And I love it. Um, the, the man named Jairus, he said his daughter, after he asked Jesus to, to, to he said, my daughter's dying. And then the, the, his servants, Jairus' servants came and said, your daughter's dead. And Jairus said, Jesus, don't even bother. She's already dead. I'm, I'm, I wish you would have got there in time. And Jesus is like, let's just go, right? How many know there's, there's nothing impossible for my God, amen? There's nothing impossible for my Jesus. And he got in the house and he took his mighty men with him and he said, you know what? Your daughter's only asleep. Get up and walk. And his daughter got up and walked, amen? And he defeated death. And in this other story, it was Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus, which were, Jesus hung out with these people. These were like his homies. 
Like, he hung out with them, and Mary came to Jesus and said, Jesus, I seen you do all this stuff. If you would have just been here three days earlier, my brother would not have died. Right? Sometimes we feel like that. We feel like, like God is helping everyone else, but he's not helping me when he should, right? I mean, you know, God is never too late, though, right? And his timing is always perfect. His timing is always good. And he said, Jesus, if you would have just been here three days late, earlier, my brother would still be alive. He would not have died. And Jesus said, you know what? Like, I, time does not matter to me, right? And so Jesus is like, get up, Lazarus. And Lazarus rose from the dead. Amen. So there's something about the feet of Jesus, right? Because all of these stories that we read, they were something that only at the foot of Jesus could they be accomplished, right? Because Jairus, he was a mighty man. He had servants, so you know he was rich. You know he had doctors. He couldn't save his daughter. And he said, if I could just get into the presence of God, maybe, right? Mary and them, they already knew this. God, if you would have been here, they're like, this would have happened, right? Like, there are some things that we have to bring to the table and bring to the altar and bring and let go and let God deliver, right? Because we can't do it on our own, right? Like, I tried for 20 years of my life to get rid of lust and pornography addiction, and I couldn't do it until I left it where? At the feet of Jesus. And then he defeated, he defeated death in these situations right here twice, right? Before Jesus rose from the dead, he rose up this baby, this little girl. He rose up Lazarus. He already knew what, how to do it, right? He already knew that he could defeat death. How many know my God is a resurrected God, right? Yeah. Amen. He is a resurrecting king like we see. He is, a, he is a God that is still today able to resurrect things in our lives. Do you believe that? Anyone? Do you guys believe that? God says, I'm resurrecting marriages today. There's some people that have been fighting and they've been on the, on the edge. And God says, I'm resurrecting that today. I'm resurrecting the joy of the Lord today. I believe that with all my heart because honey, anyone have struggles this week? Anyone just go through some hard stuff? God said today is the day of salvation. Today is the day where I'm resurrecting the joy in your life. I don't, like, like I, I, like I had a rough week. I prayed for every single person in this church almost, right? Like I was getting prayer requests all the time. And I was like, oh, come on, somebody. God is about to move. God is resurrecting things today. God is setting people free today. God is delivering people today. I'm, like I found out my company is shutting down this week. And I'm so full of joy because I don't have to worry because God's got me. Come on, somebody. Like I believe I can even have a better job and all that stuff but he is a god of resurrecting power amen and he speaks into the darkest places and brings light into them amen like lazarus was dead for three days when it starts like after a few days your body starts to decay and stink and and like he literally went into that situation and brought him back to life a lot of us we don't think that god wants to go into our bad situations right we think, oh, God don't want to deal with me because I'm stuck in pornography. God don't want to deal with me because I've been doing meth. God don't want to deal with me because I'm angry all the time. God don't want to deal with me anymore. But how many know God is a God that is able to go into them places? Come on, somebody. And he is a ready, he's a resurrecting king. The next part of where we see about the feet of Jesus, we see a lady who was a prostitute. She was a sinner. Like the, one of the like known around town. But all the guys, right? All the girls too. But she was like, she was that girl, right? And like she fell at the feet of Jesus and anointed his feet with expensive perfume and cried at his feet and wiped his feet with tears. And 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 God and Jesus said, and like all the disciples and all the people in the room were like, if you would know who this person was, Jesus, you would not be allowing her at, at your feet, right? Like, that's someone you don't want to associate with. The Son of God should not be associating with a prostitute, right? He should not be associating with someone like that, a woman like that. A lot of you guys have been called a woman or a man like that that people don't want to associate with. But how many know even if the world doesn't want to associate with you, God does, right? Yeah. Jesus does. And Jesus goes on to say that for all time, people are going to read about this prostitute woman and what she did because she sacrificed everything she could do to be at the feet of Jesus. Amen. It don't matter what we have done. It don't matter what has come in, at us in our past. It don't matter because what God has for us is so much more. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. So we see Jesus' feet anointed 
And the next time we we come to this around Easter time, and it's Thursday night. Friday he was crucified, but Thursday night he had communion with all his disciples. They had the Last Supper, right? Any of you guys seen the memes? And it's like it's like Judas telling Jesus, like, and Judas is like, "Hey Jesus, you want to go to the Last Supper?" And Jesus is like, "The what supper?" Is <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Just kidding. But he was at the Last Supper with his disciples. And they were eating, and he took communion. He's like, this is my blood. Take this in remembrance of me. This is my body. Take this in remembrance of me. He's like, and he started pouring into his disciples. And what did he do? In um, John chapter 13, 1, it, let's just read it. So before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth. And now we love them to the very end. Amen. How many know God will love them to the very end? Amen. It was time for supper. And the devil had already prompted Jesus, Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything. And that he had, that he had came from God and would return to God. So Jesus ain't scared of death. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around them. In verse 14, it says, And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. Amen. So I believe that, like, like when we read at the beginning, he says, How beautiful on the mountains are the, message, are the feet of those who bring the message of hope and salvation, right? And before Jesus died, he knew that the Holy Spirit was going to fall on us, right? Fall on his disciples. And Jesus knew that, like, like I believe that God was just, like, washing their feet clean because it's just the symbolization of, like, like I'm washing your feet because I'm, like, like I'm here to serve you and I'm here to love you. Even though I'm the king, I came to be a servant. But it's also a representation that God said, you know what, I'm going to clean even the dirtiest part of you up, right? Like, even the most filthy part of your body. Man, they walk in sandals, like, on dirt roads, like, like poop on the ground and all kinds of stuff. Like, they, like, and Jesus washed their feet. Amen. And Jesus cleaned them. How beautiful are the feet of those that spread the gospel of Christ. Amen. So we go to the next day, and um, they're yelling, crucify him. And Jesus took all these all these lashes for us, right? I think 39 lashes because 40 would be death. Just lashes, beat literally to death. And they throw a crown of horns, on, or a crown of thorns on him, sorry. A crown of thorns on Jesus, and they're bleeding. You guys seen the pictures, right? Patricia, whenever you're ready to. And we, we see about all that he went through. And them same feet that spread the good news are the same feet that carried the cross. Amen? The same beautiful feet that spread the good news of healing people and setting them free and casting out devils was the same feet that, while beat, carried the cross all the way to Mount Calvary. And, like, like as I was researching this, like, I, w I was breaking, like, in my house because God did so much for me. Like, we don't realize how beautiful the feet of our Savior is. Amen? How beautiful is the feet of Jesus that died for us, that carried a cross, like, like after getting beat, right? Like 39 lashes and then had to carry his own cross. So I did some research and it said when they, when they hung him to the cross, that his shoulders like basically immediately dislocated. And they said that after every few minutes, like like he, he had cramps like in his calves and his and his thighs the whole time. Like just this, this is, these are from scientists that just said like if that happened, like it's just cramping the whole time. Anyone had a cramp? And Jesus did that for us, like for the whole time. And they pierced his wrists. And then they pierced his feet. Amen? The beautiful feet that we've been talking about that done all this good stuff. They pierced those feet. The feet of forgiveness, right? The feet of salvation. The feet of hope. They pierced those feet. And as I was studying this, it said that in order to breathe, 
Jesus would have to push down on his feet that were pierced just to breathe. Like, like we see a lot of Hollywood movies where he's just like laying there. But he was active the whole time. Like he had to push up just to breathe. And the feet that, that, that the beautiful feet that carry the good news were now pierced, but they're still even more beautiful because now they're pierced with blood and that blood is a pure and a perfect sacrifice and that sacrifice set us free, right? That he died so that we may live, amen. That's powerful, amen. And he did that for me, like, right? He did that for you. The same feet from a baby, like, daughter so cute I love her so much I could imagine one day seeing them same feet like her Mary was just right there at the foot of the cross like watching them same feet that she put socks on when he was a little baby like parents you guys understand right but Jesus did that for us he paid it all for us how beautiful are the feet and I love the scripture in Isaiah because it was 400 plus years before Jesus came I said, how beautiful are the feet on the mountain that bring the message of good news and hope and salvation. How I many know Jesus died on Mount Calvary? Amen. Those feet that you could see died for us, right? Those blood that he shed, it was for us. The Bible says we were pierced for our transgression. Um, he was whipped for our iniquity, right? By his stripes, we are healed. Like, none of us would be here if Jesus didn't do that, right? But today God says, I have given you even more. Like, I did all that. Like, the night before Jesus was going to get crucified, he went to pray to his father. And he said, God, if there is any way you can take this cup of suffering from my hands, take it. But if not, I'm willing. Like, imagine just willingly going to your death for someone like me, right? Willingly going to your death for someone like me. And the difference, I believe, between Jesus and everyone else that ever got crucified is Jesus could have left at any time, right? He could have called angels on. He could have just said, you know what? I don't need to do this. Like, this is too much pain. But Jesus stood on the cross because that's how good our Savior is. Amen? Amen. How beautiful are the feet that got pierced. And he just breathed his last breath, pushing down on them same feet. How many guys know where the story ends? Amen, church? It's not where the story ends. But Jesus came to die and, and rise again. Amen. So to defeat death, to defeat Satan, to defeat the grave. And today we celebrate Resurrection Service Sunday because today we have the authority to walk like Jesus walked, amen. The Bible says the same spirit, the same power that rose Christ from the grave lives inside of us, amen. So now those beautiful feet of Jesus, like those are our feet, right? Like we're called to bring the good news. Like Jesus washed us clean. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid our debts. Jesus paid everything for us. He paid the ransom for our price, for our souls, amen. So if you guys see these little papers down your seats, if you can pass out pens, mom, or whoever has pens, if you guys have pens in your purse. Trick day, I got a few pens right here. But what we're going to do is, can someone bring me a little note and a pen too? So in this story, we, we saw how the most desperate times, the most things that we hold on to only can be answered at the view of Jesus, right? Only, right? And that's what I want to do today. We're going to just write something that you want to leave at the cross, right? Because Jesus already died for it. He already paid the price for it, right? Like sometimes we hold on to stuff when Jesus already said, you know what, I've delivered you from that. A lot of times we feel guilty when Jesus already said, you know what? Like, I don't even see that anymore. Like, a lot of times it's our condemnation. 
Jesus died so that we might not have condemnation. The Bible says there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ, right? You are clean. You are free. You are made new. But a lot of times we hold on to stuff that should have been left at the cross. So we go from the feet of Jesus to the foot of the cross. Amen? So if I, this is what I'm going to ask you guys to do. Like for me, this past couple months, I don't know if it's just been lack of sleep or whatever, but like I've been grumpy and that's not me. I've been angry, like, and that's not me. That's totally not me. Like, I don't even know who that person is. Like, I was talking to my wife, and we just, like, arguing and stupid stuff. And then one day, me and my mom were here doing the budget for the church, and I was just, like, I wasn't, like, I don't even think she noticed, but, like, I noticed that I was, like, snappy, <laughs> right? And I'm, like, I don't want that on my life. I remember when we did this a few years ago, I put lust because that was something that I struggled with for so many years in my life, but I left that, amen? How many know sometimes we have to keep leaving stuff at the cross? We have to keep leaving it at the foot of Jesus. We have to keep leaving it. So today, I want you guys to just pray as we sing this song. If you guys may come to the altars and you need to kneel at the feet of Jesus, like, that's fine. Like, like this is what it's for, right? Like, Easter isn't for the Easter bunny. It's not for eggs. It's not for candy. It's because Jesus died and he resurrected, amen? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to sing this song out. I'm going to ask us just to pray. And then we're just going to come up and leave whatever you want to leave at the cross. I'm going to pray for us. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for everything, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for setting us free today, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for the beautiful feet, God, that came on this earth to set us free, to deliver us, to die for us, so that we may live, Lord God. We're so excited to walk where you have called us to walk, Lord God. Bless us, Lord God, as we go, Lord God. Bless us today, Lord God. Bless everything, Lord God. So everything, Lord God, that the enemy has lying right now, God, we bind that to the pits of hell, Lord God. We are leaving it today. We are not leaving this place the same. We are not leaving this place with the same hurts, the same anxieties, the same depression, the same suicide that has to leave in the name of Jesus. Anything today, God says, leave your drugs at the cross. Leave your cigarettes at the cross. Leave your pills at the cross. Leave your addict at the cross. Leave your anxiety, your depression, your hurts, your sorrows, your lust, your greed, your anger, the things that you know have been holding you back from walking in freedom. Because God says today, I want a church that walks in joy. I want a church that walks in freedom. I want a church that walks in liberty. I want a church that is no longer who they once were, but they are changed. They are a new creation in Christ. They are set free. God says today is the day of salvation. God says, I died on the cross so that you don't have to walk around with baggage anymore. So church today, God says, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Thank you, Jesus. So for the next few minutes, we're just going to, if you want to come up and leave it at the cross, leave it at the cross. You want to come to these altars and pray. I mean, oh, God is still, he's still casting out demons. He's still healing the cripple. He's, he's still getting rid of anxiety and suicide and depression. How beautiful are the mountains are the feet of those that spread the good news of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Let's sing that song, church.
Thank you.